In September 2019, a team of scientists and dancers met in London for the British Science Festival. Our aim was to start conversations for our upcoming dance science projects, but then the COVID-19 pandemic changed all our plans. Here we now share a short video about our dance science conversations from back then at the British Science Festival in September 2019. There is a, the story of the arts as a multifaceted object. So when you interact with art, you should try to have all these elements in your experience. For me, one of the things that I find really exciting is this idea that we can build bridges from this sort of ivory tower academic side um, to real world applications. There's such a, a feel good thing that happens when you dance that it's a shame not to experience it. So why not try it um, and, and give it a chance, right? Anything that's new is automatically you're going to feel clumsy in it, you know, anything that you try for the first time. So you can't expect to get immediate gratification all the time. An element that art does to us and that we should be aware of is emotion and fantasy. That's been my experience when I would teach or when I work with um, my dancers uh, uh, on choreography. Um, you know, so much of when we learn dance is technique, right? You try to get the right, correct angles and, you know, correct technique. But if you just focus on um, ex executing the movements technically correct, it's not enough. That's not, um, that's, that's not dancing. That's executing movements correctly. <laughs> In order to really dance is to go one step beyond executing the movement and bring the expression out. Now, how does that happen? One thing that really helps with that is imagery. Um, when uh, you're doing a certain movement, if you want a certain movement quality, for example, if I'm doing a movement like this and I want some tension in it, I, I tell the dancers, pretend like you were inside honey or you're swimming in chocolate and you have to really push against that and feel the tension in your arms when you do that and it gives it a certain quality. When we interact with the world, emotions are evoked in us. We feel things. And these emotions, they are qualities in themselves. They can be good, bad, they can help us to discover new things about ourselves, but they also trigger fantasy. And fantasy for our brain is like um, a firework because it engages all um, our memories about our life in, in, the, in this world. Um, we have the, the fantasy, for example, for birds, how they fly. So if we see a static painting and we see a bird, there's some sort of imagination, some embodiment of that movement that happens. We don't see a, a bird frozen in midair. We see a flying bird um, and that can evoke a sense of movement. But also if we see colors, maybe the colors, they remind us of something. Red color, maybe it reminds us of a person and we immediately are transported back in time and we have the emotions associated to that situation, person, feelings that we had at the time. Um, fantasy can be so much for us. It can also help us to um, make our movements better in our everyday life. I mean, something so simple like, if I tell you, sit up straight, you will do something like this very unergonomic way of treating your body. But if you imagine someone is pulling you up by your hair, your, actually your body aligns around an imaginary axis. And that's much more healthy for all your joints <laughs> than um, sitting up straight, a verbal, very clear um, sort of instruction like that. the icon dance very often um, 
It depends. Sometimes we've had people who were around and they came for the bar for a drink or for the music and they, they didn't come to dance. And you go to them and invite them uh, and they say, oh, no, no, I don't dance. And if you manage to get them up <laughs> five minutes later, that you can't stop them. Let's move to rhythm. In everything of our life, there is rhythm. Day, night, years, that come, seasons. Um, the rhythms of our bodies, circadian rhythms, um, the rhythms of our hormones, of our neurotransmitters, of our brain pulsating throughout all days and nights of our lives, the blood being pumped. There's always this rhythm in, in different, like quicker rhythms and rhythms that are superimposed over and under these quicker rhythms of our lives. And sometimes breaking the rhythm and the structure can be really strong um, experiences for us. As I delved into the dance, I discovered there was a whole history behind it. And for me, the history is important because that way you understand the styling. So I meet a lot of young dancers today who know nothing of the history and it, the dancing, they can be technically fantastic, but it creates a shell. Whereas if you understand where the dance came from, and a lot of jazz dance really uh, has a very hard cap ground, there's a lot of life in that dance, and it's the life that gives it soul. And another aspect or element is society and culture. The binding effect of art that they can have for us. Movement is um, is a language, really. It's a language of the body. So uh, when you're learning a dance of a certain culture, you're really learning about the culture itself. It, the, so much of the cultural behavior is embedded in the movement style. Um, there are different cultural elements. Um, the way people uh, communicate with each other. Uh, a lot of uh, what you call reading between the lines, a lot of implications, nonverbal communication uh, that has developed over many, many years and centuries in a certain culture um, is also embedded in the movement. Everybody thinks this is what art is about. <laughs> this one is technique and aesthetics. Technique is only a means to expand your experience of dance. And if you learn how to step better and to master the rhythm, to feel the connection better, then you have more possibilities and access to more emotions. But for me, dancing is really about um, how it feels. And if I speak about swing dancing, how it feels to move with your partner and maybe um, translate what you hear in the music and uh, into your body, make a visual uh, perception of it. And also, of course, for, for the dancer himself or herself, the, the feeling of moving through the music and you feel like one, you, your partner and the music are really in tune. People that I talk to often think, ah, I'm not good at this. So I say, what do you mean? I have not got the technique or if I do it, it would look stupid. So look stupid and I don't have the technique or I'm not able to do it means I don't have the technique and I'm not good at the aesthetics of it. But that's not all what there is to it. And our brain is amazing. It can learn. Next one. It's connection and connectedness. So the default mode network is um, a series of brain regions whose activity seems to go up when you're focused inwardly um, and less so when you're doing a task or something external that gives you a, an obvious focus of your attention. It overlaps a lot with um, parts of your brain that are interested in understanding other people and understanding other people's thoughts and emotions, so what we would call theory of mind. Um, so there's a debate about what the default mode network is doing, but one hypothesis is that it's about generating these kind of internal worlds, this kind of fantasy uh, work, 
that typically include other characters, right? Other people and, and who are acting on their own motivations and have their own information so that you're simulating other people's minds, essentially. I connect with something that reflects into me. So art can be a way of connecting myself with uh, myself. Sounds weird, what does that actually mean? Well, if something in a picture it can be a sensorial experience or feeling or color or sound or taste, and it reminds me of something, it, our senses are directly connected with our memory and our memory is who we are is our life experience so in this way we're transported again into ourselves something that rem reminds us of our identity The last one is probably also one that a lot of people can relate to, but they don't know how to reach the state. That's flow. In any dance style, there are definitely uh, types of uh, general movements that are uplifting, I mean, literally uplifting, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, specifically with Persian dance, I think in Persian arts in general, there is such a strong connection uh, to uh, nature. And you see that in textiles, you see it in the carpets that, th that are woven, uh, a lot of like animals and birds and different shapes and everything kind of um, connecting and relating to each other. And it has to do with nature. So what I've noticed in Persian dance is that a lot of the movements are organic. They're very circular. They take in uh, gravity and um, there's such a natural flow to the movement going from one movement to another. Um, it's important that the transitions are natural and smooth uh, as opposed to abruptly stopping uh, a movement and going into something else. Flow or meditation or a type of uh, mindfulness meditation in a way can be the experience of interacting with art. We know from a lot of research with Buddhist monks or with meditation practitioners that people can experience really, really strong states of, of joy and well-being by entering the state of flow where time and space it just disappears around you and you don't notice that um, you're in this world. You're sort of transported somewhere else. That feeling is nice but it also, again, has very important effects in our body. It can activate us, it can also relax us, but it will always give us a very clear mind. So apart from these physiological effects, it actually also organizes our thoughts. The pandemic changed many things. During the pandemic, we wrote a theoretical article about those conversations that we had in London back in 2019 at the British Science Festival. The article is titled a practice-inspired mindset for researching the psychophysiological and medical health effects of recreational dance. It was published by Frontiers in Psychology in 2021. We also published a chapter in the book Arts and Mindfulness Education for Human Flourishing, published with Rutledge in 2023. Our chapter is titled Human Flourishing Through Dance and its contents were inspired by those conversations that we had back in London. Now let's see where our projects take us next.